clock strikes again. <laughs> Let's see where we're at. Okay. How you doing? <clears throat> Hi Yvonne. Facebook strikes again. Well, let me go live in landscape. Well, I think we'd be all right with this one tonight. It's not such a big thing. Hi, Andreen. Hope you're all well. It's been a lovely day here today. Very nice day. All sunny and warm. There you go. Hope you've had good weather. Hopefully it's the start of the, the good stuff to come. Hi Gloria. Glad you found us okay. I'm just trying to see what that little thing is in the corner. I'm not sure. There you go. I'll just wait for a couple more to come on. Hi Philippa. But I know Facebook does not like me at the moment. I have no, no idea what I've done to upset it, but... I must have done something. It doesn't like me much at all. That's life. Well, at least I'm managing to get a couple of posts out. It lets me post in admin, but it does in any groups that I'm admin on, but it does not let me post on anything else. So it's very sporadic. <laughs> it's quite annoying, actually. Hi, Gail. Yeah, it, it, it has here as well. It, you know, it was getting to the point where everything was just waterlogged. It was ridiculous. So, hi Brian. Right, I'm going to make a start. This is not going to take long. It looks more, far more complicated than it is. Okay, so it starts life as an 8x8 card blank. Okay, I've got another one cut here. Hiya Julie. I've got another one cut to show you how to make um, a smaller version as well, which is this. This on, you can see the difference in the size of them. Um, this one can, and all the struts and everything, this this one on the right. Uh, hi Vanessa, can be cut from an um, A4 sheet. So when we get to that bit, I'll show you. Okay, but I wanted to make a bigger one this time. So um, rather than make a card blank, I used an 8x8 card blank. And I cut it down to um, six inches by seven inches so that then became this so I'll just move that out of the way that eight by eight became this size that I wanted you can do these in any size you want they're really quite easy to do so um, and then the next thing to do and I'm going to obviously you have to use it with the fold at the top so that you can fit your your struts and your panels and everything on it and then the next thing I want you to do is take a ruler and on the front part of the card starting from the bottom of the card not the bit where the fold is starting from the bottom hey Ben measure out three quarters of an inch it uh, yeah I think it's three quarters of an inch let me just check yeah three quarters of an inch now this bit here, this three quarters of an inch, is going to become, once you cut it off, it's going to become um, these parts here. Okay? So, if you want them to be an inch wide, then do it an inch. You know, if you're going to do a full eight by eight, do them a little bit wider. But I, I'm just sticking with three quarters of an inch for now. Um, so, get three quarters of an inch, make a mark. Then another three quarters of an inch, make a mark. And so, what you're going to do is you're going to make five marks. Okay, and you're going to bring in your cut, your cutting, whatever it is you use to cut with, and you're going to trim down just that front piece, just this front one. So open it out, lay it on, and trim them off. Okay, don't worry if you don't hit it exactly on. No one's going to measure your fence and tell you you're wrong. So just make sure it's butted up to the top, and just trim off those five marks okay there we go and so then you're left with this all right and your five pieces that you've just trimmed off okay so 
I'm going to put a piece of paper in this one just to make it easier for you to see when I'm lining stuff up. So I've cut a piece, I found a piece of a nice piece of ombre paper. Hi Lynn, and I'm going to glue this in just to make it easier for you to see when I'm lining it up. Because otherwise it'd be white on white and it'd be quite a bit, you know, a bit difficult to see. So I'm literally just going to glue this in the back, which will technically become the inside. So I'll put it that way up. And then you'll be able to see it. There we go. Straight up a good. There we go. Right. So the next thing we need to do is before we do anything else, make the sky. Make the part that looks like the sky on the top. Oh no, Sandy, I hope you feel alright. Everyone's got colds, haven't they? I hope you'd uh, get over it quickly. Not good. But it's still nice to see the grandkids, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is just open this up so I can work on the front panel here. And to do that, I don't have the um, the stencil of Julie's uh, with, the, with the sky clouds on the side. I haven't got that. So I've just cut myself, basically, a piece of card. Um, you know, with, with, you can see it's got a kind of cloud effect on it really and I'm going to work from the fold down all right so you can either open it up or you know do it closed totally up to you if you do it closed then you're not going to get any ink on the back I suppose and for this I'm using um distress ink stormy sky and literally all you do once you've got it is don't put too much ink on at once build it gently and all you do is just kind of go over the side it doesn't look like it's doing a great lot and you can see you start well maybe you can't because it's a bit light but um you will see on you when you're doing yours you'll see it I'm, I'm not sure whether i've used this brush for a bit of oxide as well um so it might have a bit of an oxide mix on it, which is why it's a bit patchy. But what you do is you just kind of move it from side to side. I'm sure you know how to do this. Um, Re-inking in various places. So you've got light clouds and dark clouds. And you just kind of, I'm doing it a little darker so you can see it now. Just vary the shapes of the clouds. Don't have them all the same all the way down because that wouldn't look here. Uh, you can even turn this piece over to make it look a little bit different. You know. You just kind of run it across the edge to get some cloud effects, really. How close together you do them, up to you. Turn it back over again, make a different shape. So it's a different shape there. You don't really have to re-ink it too much each time. You do want to leave a little bit of white. I'm sure you can see that now. I can. You want to leave a little bit of white in between them so it looks like fluffy clouds. But if you use tumbled glass, it gets a paler sky. Um, I suppose if you wanted to do storm clouds like we have mostly lately, you could do a pale grey as well. But it's, it's quite a good uh, technique, this. I'm sure you've done it before. Because then you can, use, um, you can use it for balloon cards or, you know, hot air balloon cards or a little bit masculine ones. I think I did one once with two little kids on a swing. With the, with the clouds behind it as well. So when you get like, near to the bottom, then move in, move your card so that you can not go over the bit that you've just put a paper on. And then just finish it off. Once you get there, right down to the bottom, you don't want to put any more clouds on. Just take your, your brush and add a little bit of blue to there. There you go. So if you've got any patches, even them out the top because I have there. I definitely have got oxide as well as ink on this. I've just used the wrong brush, but hey ho. So I've kind of darkened around the edge, turn it out so it's not fussy and you can see. There we go. So now we've got the cloud effect. We no longer need this. It's done. We don't need the stormy sky anymore. So easiest way to do this: leave that to one side now, and then bring in your struts. So. You're going to put some that go this way, okay, and we need to colour them before we do anything, so some that go this way, 
Actually, you can't see them on there, can you? I'll bring this in. Let's see if this works better for you. Yeah, you'll be able to see them better on there now. Hiya, Pat. There we go. So I'm going to do the five, and I've also cut myself. I probably won't need these whole five, because I'm going to put a gap in between them. But I've also cut myself three extra ones at three quarters of an inch. I'm going to colour them all at the same time. And they're going to become the struts that go upwards. Okay. So let's see. One at a time. And for that I'm using Distress Ink. I've got Antique Linen. And I've got a bit of Brush Corduroy. I think these are slightly different colours than I used before. But obviously um, a light one and a slightly darker one is the best way to go. So... What I'm going to do is start with the antique linen and I'm not going to put it on um, completely flat because you'll just get a big square. I kind of, when I do it, I kind of angle it and drag it down. Okay, so hold on to one end. It doesn't matter which end you go from really, I suppose. Um, and you're just dragging some colour on. You want some spaces in between it because fence panels do look a bit like that. But don't worry too much, you know. No one's going to shout at you because your fence doesn't look like a real fence. So just drag some colour on. You can go darker at one end. We are going to cut these down a bit because they're a bit long. So, uh, and it also helps if your ink pad's not really, really juicy either because I've had this anti cleaner in a long time. And although I do use it quite a lot, it doesn't seem to have dried up as quick as the others. Hi Catherine. It's okay, doll. You haven't missed much. I've only cut a bit off five pieces off a bit of card. You haven't missed much. You can go back over, I'll save it. We always save the money at any hour. So gently drag it down. There we go. That's the pale one done. Now the next one, just be a bit careful with this one because it's quite dark unless you want a really dark fence that is but you could do a beach kind of beach themed one as well if you did it in blues and it greys you know so it, you could do a beach theme behind it then um this one as i said is brush corduroy so i'm just gonna drag you see i've got some lines on that one but that doesn't matter the fence police won't have me it'll be fine you can go in with as many color browns as you want you can make it even darker than by going in with, you know, something like a vintage photo or a ground espresso or just whatever you've got really in the browns, you know. So just a case of dragging it down to make some planks. And obviously each one looks different, which is quite cute as well. You'll, you'll go a bit heavier on one maybe than you do on the other, like there. So that's them done. I'm just going to get this ink off because I'm bound, fine sure. Yeah, it, it is a really, a really easy way of using them. And that way you can, you know, if you've got really long ones, you can make a longer, taller card. And yeah, it's not my idea. I found it, I found it on, um, on Pinterest and I thought, oh, that's quite interesting. I've never made one of them, you know. I like it. I like going on Pinterest. Other than Julie's boards, it's, it's a really, really good uh, source of inspiration in Kevin So I shall ditch that on the floor and uh, sort it out later. So you've got your fence panels now. Okay. Some of these, or one of these, I did have a mark on. Yeah, there it is there. I'll put a mark on the back of it. So we've got to keep three for the struts. So I'm keeping them three. So, there is a handy tip on how to line this up and get it straight. So, if you bring in your scoreboard, okay, and you pop your card, I'll just wait for the computer to catch up. Darn thing. There we go. You put your card up in the corner there, right? You can see where you need to line it up. So, we don't want to put them all back on because we need to have a space in between, all right? 
So you can, I've got three short ones which are the struts and three longer ones. There we go, there we are. And the rest of them are longer. So you can either start it right at the bottom, which is I think what I did. Um, and then just start to put them together where you want them to be spaced evenly if you can. Um, I, I find that when you've cut these five off you only actually need four of them because then you're going to give yourself a nice little space. So that one I don't particularly like too much so I can ditch that one but that one I do quite like. You don't have to start at the bottom you can start further up if you want so it would be like a proper picket fence I guess. So if you just lay them on like that, check them. I know, I do lose hours of my life on Pinterest, Brian. I really do have a night time when there's nothing on telly. So I've got them there. Now, the struts for going upwards, all right? When I did the other one, I used a corner rounder and I used the smallest notch and I rounded the corners to make them like a kind of rounded one. I'm gonna change it up with this one. I'm gonna do pointy ones. Now, these are three quarters um, of, a, of an inch, as you know. So basically, all you need to do is, I'll bring it up, see if you can see the mark, the pencil mark. Yeah, you can. Just find the middle and then go down a centimetre on either side and draw a, a point on it. And this will give you your pointy bits for your fence. And then just trim it down. There we go. Now we've got a pointy fence. Okay. So if you kind of work out where you're going to put it in the middle, then you can sort of see that six inches across. So about three inches is the middle. So if you place it, so if the point is pointing at the three inches, you're in around about the right place. So if I put glue on there, on there and on there line it up see how far up it's going to go how far up you want it to go and then just put a bit of glue on the top point you can press everything down place it on there we are and then you know it's straight okay and that one will hold them where they need to be you're only putting it on the middle part of the plank so you're not, hopefully, the glue's not going to squirt out and stick the whole front to the back. If it does, you'll just have to replace the piece of paper that's inside. Okay, there we go. Another one there. So, put some glue on. Told you it was easier than it looked. Line up your plank. Put it on. This, this fence part is higher than the last one, but that doesn't matter. Make it look a bit different, won't it? Same again on this side, about halfway between. Pop it on. Anything that's hanging over at the end, you can always trim off. Okay, so there we go. And then you can lift it up, move it out of the way while you get on with your flowers and leave it to dry. If you haven't got any glue, um, use double sided tape either of those hot glue anything whatever you've got that will glue it so i'm going to move that off let it dry out while i sort the flowers out ready to go on easy so far any questions it's very easy so far so i will be using for the rest of the card i'll be using um julie's daisies um and the the daisy dye to go with them i've already prepped them as you know you know what I'm like I get everything pressed ahead and I've also used this time I've used Philippa's dossier about you let me just make sure I'm going the right way and dossier about you and blooming lovely which is what I created the um sentiment with so I use the the words there live life in full bloom and then I used the circle there to put around the outside of it. And then I just punched it out with a circle punch or, you know, you can use a die, I guess. So, have we got anything else we need to get ready? No. 
Right, so what I've got is three of the large daisies and three of the small daisies. Okay, and I've also cut some leaves out of one of Julie's others, uh, one of Julie's other flower dies, uh, stamps, flower stamp set. Okay, so we'll just colour these up, and to do that, I'm going to use uh, distress ink again. I've coloured these leaves very, very roughly, my style, as you know, I do everything watercolour roughly. Um, I'm going to use mustard seed, um, let me see if I can get you in shot, yeah, bit of mustard seed, and I'm also going to use a bit of wild honey as well, okay, just to darken her up in the middle. I've got a water brush I have got a piece of tissue as well somewhere knocking about so let's get some water on here I think I got a bit of red on that from the last time I used it yeah okay so I'm just gonna make a kind of watery wash and I don't do the whole flower as you know I just kind of do the middle part of the petal wipe it off I've got to spray it, put some water down with the spray, it'd be easier. Wipe my brush, dry it a bit, and then just drag some of that colour down. I've stamped it with um, Versafine. And it's only onto normal cardstock. It's not on watercolour card, because, to be honest, we're not using a great deal of water. So, I've got a bit of yellow. Just keep going with it until you've got as much yellow as you want. And while it's still a bit wet, pick up some of the wild honey and... Add it to just where the edge of the petal meets the top of the flower. There we are. And then that will kind of merge itself together while you carry on with the rest of them. So wet your brush. Bit of the yellow. New great skill. There we are. Put some on. There we go. bit of the wild honey on it as well it just this wild honey just gives it um you know a little bit of depth i think so what have you all been making today have you been making anything i had a nice day just zentangling doing my calendar really I've never really done it before uh i've never zentangled much before but i've quite enjoyed it it's not perfect, but I don't think it's meant to be, is it? Just enjoy the process, don't you? A little bit of wild honey on there. I kind of like, I, I think I've said this many times, but I just, I like the flowers, quite loosely coloured. I'm not quite fond of, um, and it takes longer, obviously. Just drag some of the colour out if you've got too many. I just think the they pop nicely and in all honesty you don't really have to colour them do you because Julie stamps are that detailed they don't have to be coloured but it's nice to put a bit of colour in I guess right a bit more of that one yeah you're putting that little water on that just use an ordinary cardstock is fine it's, it is a 300 GSM one I tend to use that for most things um, and, my, and mine goes through, 300 goes through my cheap printer as well, which is a bonus, so I don't have to worry too much about getting all kinds of different card stocks. And if funny, the way you always go quiet when you're painting. Well, I do anyway. Yeah, that's right, Brian, it's all about freedom. Took me. A, I'm not gonna lie. It took me a while to do it. Like, and I got to. I got to a, a little point and I thought, oh, what am I gonna do now? I think I've. I've. I'd, I thought I'd used up all me. Uh, all what I, you know. All what I could think of to do, but I managed to to do it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I, I think it might be something I, I. I carry on with. You remember the the um. The project book I made last week that things to do. I might make myself a little one of those and um, use that for my Zentangle, make my own little book. 
There we go. So let's move that now. I don't think I need that for anything just now. And the stems, I haven't got a paintbrush that fine. So I've just pulled out one of my, um, my green pencils and I'm just going to go down the stem. You don't really see that much of it, to be honest, because they're all tucked behind each other. So as long as, you know, the bit you do see, you've got a bit of green on, then, then it'll look like it's meant to. I'm not the neatest colourer in the world. Especially when I'm five foot away from the camera, like. I'm trying not to get my head underneath it. Yeah. Use all the cardstock and make you sell a book. I think that's the way to go. There we go. Yeah, they're almost dry. There's already. That's our little water we've put on. There we are. That's them all done. This is quite... This pencil is quite near to the colour of the um, the leaves as well, which was peeled paint, that colour. So, yeah, touch lucky with that. Pick the right one there. So, we've got the flowers. What else do we need? We need a plant pot. Yeah, we need a plant pot. So, all I've got for the plant pot, made me own, obviously. No dyes to make a plant pot. So, hi Leslie, don't worry. Okay, so I've cut myself a piece of card that is two inches by one and three quarter inches. Okay, and now I'm going to colour this with uh, Distress Ink and blending brushes this time. So, let me see what I've brought out. I've brought a bit of Rusty Hinge, a bit of Brush Corduroy, and I think I'll start with the Antique Linen again. I'm just going to swipe it across, just like I did before, but this time I want a bit more coverage as I do want the plant pot to be kind of coloured. Swipe it so you've got some coverage on it. There we are. That'll do. You can always put a bit more on if you don't like what you've done so far. And then the brush corduroy, which is the same as we used in the fence really, but I'm just going to drag it in from the side, either side. Not so much in the middle, just either side. So it gives it a little bit of, I don't know, te texture. I don't know, not texture, whatever it's called. So we've got that. Doesn't much look like a plant pot just now, does it? And then I've got, uh, I think this is Rusty Hinge. Yeah, Rusty Hinge. Now this one I don't use very often and it's quite juicy. So I'm going to load up my sponge because I don't have a brush for it. And I'm just going to swipe some on. Again, it'll give it a little bit of extra colour down the side. Bring it in a bit because you're going to cut some of the side off. Okay. And then you can always add a little bit more. That's not great, is it? Hey ho. It's an old terracotta plant pot is what it is. And bring it up from the bottom as well. Just Darken up the bottom part. Okay, so we've got some colour on it. Dimension, that's the word. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. Okay, so what I want you to do next is turn it over. And first, first of all, I want you to snip off one centimetre, just straight across from the top. Okay. And that will become the rim of your plant pot. So snip that off. Keep hold of that one. Okay. And then I've basically gone in a half a centimetre from each side. Made a mark. Let me see if you can see that. Made a mark either side. And then I'm going to cut from that mark up to the top corner. Snip that bit off. And snip that bit off. So now you've got the bottom part of your pot. And the piece that you cut off will become the top part of your pot. Okay, so again, up to you how wide you want it, how tall you want it. It's, it's all about whatever you want. So, another wipe of the fingers before I get ink all over my sky. 
So leave that pot to one side and now start with your flowers, popping them on here. So I think I started with one flat one quite high up. Now my fence is taller this time. So lay out your, your design first and then you can just lift each one up and glue it on. I went with one there uh, and the good thing is you can move them about one there and then I put one on with foam pads. This one's got foam pads on which sits there. Bring in your pot, see how far down you've got to go. Okay, then keep going. Well, I'm just going to go for it. So I'm going to lift it up. This one, obviously, I'm going to glue to the fence panel. Just check where it's going, glue-wise. You don't want to glue the back. And if you're really unsure about it, open your card out. Okay, that would be the safest bet. And glue that one flat. Then again, you want a bit of dimension, but I'm not too bothered. Um, I'm not too bothered about too much dimension on this one. It's the one next that comes next. I want to have a bit. Don't worry about these. You can snip them off or just tuck them behind the plant pot. This is the one that's got the foam pad on. Okay, so that one can go. There. You want it to look like there's lots and lots in the pot, basically. There we go. And then you've got three small ones, so let's see where they're going to go. About there, I would say. And your pot can go there, so it can come a bit further down. Uh, flat that one, I think. There. Dimension on this one. There's a foam pad on it. There you go. And then again, bring in your pot. Well, actually, you can glue this piece to the top now. So it's got like a little lip. You could have put foam pad on that as well if you wanted to raise it up. So now if we put that right at the bottom, I can fit that one in about there right in the middle so i think i'll foam pad it why not i thought i had some out somewhere clearly not there we are there's one really i'm scraping the barrel with these foam pads now i found these in the back of the drawer <laughs> there we go that one can sit there and now this definitely has to have foam pads on it because you want it to be raised up. But I'm just going to trim some of these off about now. Chop them off so they're not hanging off the bottom. There we are. So let's see what we've got in the way of foam pads now. There's a few. That'll do it. Put one on there. Obviously, when you make the, this, take, use the, uh, you won't have the writing on the back. So, if I pop that on there, and then I can start to put some leaves in. So, I know I've not got, If just be aware if you're putting foam pads on, that it's actually sticking to the fence and not going to be sticky underneath, and not actually stick to the back of your card, you know. So, let's bring in the leaves. And now, we can start tucking the leaves in where we want to lift that up one in there I feel. So just a bit of glue on the back of it and again glue it to the fence panel or to the front part of your pot. Uh, I think I cut six leaves but I'm not sure. As many as you want to put in really isn't it? So pop that one on there and then in and around the back part of them then. You can lift them up, slide them underneath the fence panel underneath onto the fence panel I should say one on there one there one there even them up you've got five let's see what one looks like up there why not 
and you can trim them down obviously pop them in there we go oh, I almost have to put another one in there yeah yep can't have six got to be seven I'll pop that one a bit further down so it doesn't stand up so much there we are <clears throat> now if you wish you can put a bow on I'm not going to bother I think I put a bow on the first one and then I, I took a photograph of it and then I took it off because I thought no I don't like the bow but that's that and then all that's left to do is put Philippa's sentiment on whatever you want because my panels are a bit high um, this time round it will cover one of them but that's okay we can look at that actually no I'm going to pop it there because I quite like it there there we are so that's that and that is the card once it's all fully dried and everything it does actually stand up this one you can see through and you can see a bit of green on it this one as you can see shorter fence panels rounded at the top um very similar though the pots on this one's a bit more orange than that one but you can see the green behind this one um where it's just plain white behind that one i might put a piece of paper behind there actually so the one i was telling you about you would do in exactly the same way this is i'll give you the measurements for this and it makes um a five by seven card go in a five by seven envelope so to start off you need um i'm not going to make this in its entirety like i've just done i just want to give you the measurements it's you start off with an eight and three quarter by five inch um piece of white card 300 gsm and you score it at seven okay and that gives you a shorter part, part at the top but it works just the same and then you'd put a piece in and then you've got what you cut off your a4 um you can make the struts with and the struts then become three and a quarter inches by five obviously uh, just do your sky first if you don't want to put sky on it then you can put some paper on okay so it would look something like that and then you've got your three struts there just measure them up and that would give you the same card but um, a five by seven when it's completed so there you go there's a little bit of housekeeping to do because Julie asked me to say um, that tomorrow you have to set your alarms because she's, it's the launch of pieces, hand-drawn floral stamps. And it's at, um, Tuesday the 19th of March, that's tomorrow, at 9am on the Julie Hickey Designs page. Now, you are going to absolutely love these new stamps. The, the, we all have, we've loved them um, while we've been making the samples with them. So don't forget to tune in for that tomorrow. Um, there's a list of all your stockists for julie's um stamps and dyes and stencils and everything um on the julie hickey design page and also on the crafty friends of julie hickey so you'll be able to find your favorite stockists there and get them so get them all ready for tomorrow get your little fingers ready to order all the stuff so thank you for watching i hope that you enjoyed it and if you did and you make one tag me so i can have a look and um have a nice evening, guys. Thank you for joining me. Bye.